In today's tool review video here, we are going to review these two tools here. We have here the Milwaukee M12 cordless 3 8 inch ratchet, and we're going to compare it to this Ryobi 18 volt 3 8 inch ratchet with a four position rotating head. We are going to run both of these ratchets through the ringer, folks, and we're going to see which one of these is number one, and it all starts right now. You are probably wondering to yourself, okay, why do I need an electronic ratchet? Well, I think these are one of the best tools ever to have in your bag. It's such, such a convenient tool to have. It gets you out of a lot of messes. So let's say you're doing some work in your car engine, right? And you're going to use a ratchet here with a socket. So what happens is sometimes you're stuck in these little areas of the engine where all you can do is this. Because there's not enough room to move your hand. This would take you forever to get a screw out, right? So instead of wasting time all day with that limited room inside your engine compartment, trying to go like this to undo your bolt there, what you do is this instead. You put the, the socket here onto your tool here. And look at that, that can tighten it really fast. Or you can switch direction. So you can see how fast that unscrews the bolts for you. Now I've already owned and been using this Milwaukee M12 3 8 inch cordless ratchet wrench here for about the last three years or so and I love this thing. So it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up against the Ryobi. Now we've used this for a number of different videos that you've probably seen it and that, that's why we did this tool review video because a lot of people are asking me about it. You have also seen me in some of my previous videos using this Milwaukee uh, 3 8 inch cordless ratchet here on some of my numerous foreclosure flip properties when I'm remodeling them and I'm installing the dishwashers there and this is really handy because it's pretty much the only tool you can use to, to easily get at the front legs of those dishwashers to level your dishwasher. That's why a lot of people don't level their dishwashers because it's difficult to do it and they don't have this tool. Okay so here's how we use the wrench here. The ratchet. We stick it up and above and you find the top of the bolt. Once you find the top of the bolt, so you can start spinning it there. You could also do it with a regular wrench, but the regular wrench just takes way too many revolutions. All right, now those of you who follow our other channel, carbuyingtips.com, you know that in addition to do the buying guides and the consumer advocate stuff for car buying for consumers, we also have some how-to repair videos for your car. And you'll see in some of those videos, I've used this a lot too, to do repairs, especially when you're removing the lug nuts. There's a lot of turns you gotta make on those lug nuts. This tool really comes in handy for that and for getting into the engine to the really hard to get at spots there. So I'll put some links to a couple of videos over on our car buying tips channel for you to see. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed or you haven't been over to that channel, you make sure you get over there and see it. You'll be glad you did. Milwaukee M12 3 8 inch cordless ratchet weighs here. This is the tool only without the battery in it. And it weighs in at one pound, nine ounces, rounded up. And now with the M12 battery attached, the Milwaukee ratchet weighs in at one pound, 15 ounces. Now let's see how much the Ryobi 3 8 inch electric ratchet weighs without the battery. This is tool only. And it weighs in at one pound, 14.6 ounces. So we will call this one pound, 15 ounces. Just a frog here under two pounds. Okay, now with the small battery attached to it, let's see how much Mr. Ryobi Ratchet weighs now. Two pounds, 10 and a half ounces. So we'll, maybe we'll just round it up. Two pounds, 11 ounces. And lastly, with the four amp hour battery attached here, the Ryobi Ratchet weighs in at a whopping three pounds, 13 ounces. 
the Ryobi P344 18 volt 3 8 inch ratchet is a tool only version of this so you have to have a battery and a charger it comes with a four position rotating head Ryobi claims it has up to 35 foot pounds of torque and 230 RPMs the anvil is a 3 8 inch anvil this 3 8 inch electric ratchet comes complete with Ryobi's standard three-year limited warranty. Ryobi also has a 90-day no-risk satisfaction guarantee on this ratchet as well. This Ryobi ratchet also comes with two lights to illuminate the workspace and a custom paddle switch for increased comfort. This ratchet is made in China and it is brought into the United States through Mexico by Home Depot's service division and it is distributed throughout the United States from there. The Milwaukee M12 cordless 3 8 inch ratchet is a tool only product. Its model number is 2457-20. It has a compact low profile ratchet head that's only about three quarters of an inch across there. It also comes with the Redlink Intelligence that provides you with overload protection, optimized performance, and a fuel gauge built right onto the side of the ratchet there. The Milwaukee Cordless 3 8 inch ratchet comes with a five year warranty. This Milwaukee ratchet is designed by Milwaukee Tool in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and the tool is manufactured in China. Okay, so I've chosen two bolts here on the engine here that secure down, I guess, the whole shield here over the radiator, and we're going to tighten these down. Now, let me just give you a warning about torque wrenches that a lot of people always get wrong. Do not use your torque wrench as a ratchet. This is not a ratchet, folks. This is a ratchet. They look exactly the same, and you could put the socket down there and tighten it, but don't tighten down bolts with a torque wrench. You tighten them down with the ratchet first, then you come in with the torque wrench and just make that one little move till you hear it go click, and that's it. So think of baseball, where this is the pitcher that pitches the first seven or eight innings, and this is the closer, okay? He only does one job, he closes the deal. So you can ruin your torque wrench by continuously trying to use it as a ratchet wrench, and all that constant tightening, it'll wear it down. Okay, so the other thing they warn you about here is to not use this as a ratchet when it's off. So here we are, we're in the off position, right? Don't just stick this on there and use it as a ratchet to tighten a nut because you don't know how much force you're exerting and you could start causing damage inside here to the head. So the best thing to do is to just let it do its job on its own without any outside force from you. Just stop when it stops like this. Let's tighten it down. See, that's how you know when to stop. You don't keep going and trying to tighten it further like a ratchet. Let's just try to gauge how much torque that the Milwaukee ratchet put on this just by trying to see how much it would take to loosen it. Okay, so now trying the same thing with the Ryobi. Now remember how, you know, we, we looked at the battery and look, see how the battery is kind of creating a little hindrance to get right on there quickly. Of course, you know, we could have done it from the other side. But this is where being able to flip the whole turret around here like this, right? Now we're going to turn it around this way and notice how now it, it doesn't have the obstruction anymore. It's not out of line like it was before. You see that? So let's try tightening this one. Before I do that though, I have to loosen it. So this is a good test here because it's also testing whether or not the Ryobi can loosen the same bolt that the Milwaukee just got done tightening. Okay, so I've put down the Ryobi here and we're going to tighten it first with the Milwaukee. Okay, so he's on there as tight as he can go. Okay, so we're going to tighten that bolt down here with the Milwaukee. That's as tight as it will go. And now we'll see if the Ryobi can loosen it. 
And you notice how we have that new setup here, right? Where we've rotated the head around, so it's made it past that hindrance there. So let's give it a shot here. Piece of cake. Now you saw it had that little bit of struggle at the beginning. Both wrenches do that, where they, they kind of sit there and go, and then boom, then they start right up. Okay, so now we're going to reverse the direction here. And we're going to tighten this bolt back down here with the Ryobi ratchet here. And see if the Milwaukee ratchet can loosen it. And here is the Milwaukee ratchet now. We're going to put it on here and make sure it's set to loosen. And let's see if he can loosen it. Yep. Very easily. So let's tighten him back down. Well, you can see this only got single digits in torque. In fact, it didn't look like it came anywhere near the 35 foot-pounds. So is there something wrong here? Is there a problem with our measurements? Uh, the Milwaukee electric ratchet also didn't seem to get much torque at all going. So the, the fact that it says that they're rated up to, up to 35 foot-pounds, does that mean that it can torque a bolt to 35 foot-pounds? Well, in this case, clearly not. So I don't know, maybe they have a different testing methodology as to how they determined the torque levels. So now if you just try to operate it electrically, let's see what it does. See, look, it doesn't, it barely gets past two. Look, I saw like a 2.4 on there, 2.3. So it really doesn't seem to have a whole lot of strength there. Okay, now the same thing when we put the Ryobi electric ratchet on here too. See, I can play with it in manual mode there and kind of get it up into the almost the 20 range there, 20 foot-pounds. And, but see, just really can't get that, that far. Now, if we try to operate it electrically like we did with the Milwaukee, same thing. See, it just kind of, he looks like he got up to about three or four. So he got a little bit higher. Okay, so now as we compare the two form factors here, you know, you might look at the Ryobi and you go, man, that thing is huge. Why, why would you get such a big driver like that if this is supposed to be you know, for working in the cars and saving space. How is that saving any space? Well, see, that is where I believe Ryobi did a great job here of overcoming that issue. Because you can see here, if we lift up the collar and we spin the head around here now, and now let's turn the Milwaukee around so they're both facing the, the same direction, right? If you look at the business end on both of these now, they both suddenly look like they're the exact same tool now. Just forget about this part of the battery sticking out over here because this is facing you anyway. This is the part that's facing the work surface. So suddenly the Ryobi doesn't look that much bigger now from the business end of it, see? So they're both still able to get into that tight space on this side of it. And all the bulkiness is left to be on this side of it. That is a brilliant way that Ryobi overcame this. Okay, now the Ryobi ratchet here is a brushed motor this is not brushed now if you look right in here you'll see it when the sparks come when i activate it watch this see this right inside that slot there you can see all the sparks so that's a brushed motor that's the sparks coming off of the commutator so we know that this is a brushed tool but it's just not producing any visible sparks that we could see anywhere we tried on the back we tried here on the sides. My only complaint that I really have about the build quality of the Ryobi here, see where the the two half shells come together here? There's a little bit of a open hairline there. It's just not quite as tight as you see here on the Milwaukee. So if you look here where the two parts of the housing come together on the Ryobi electric ratchet there, and then look at the same spot here on the Milwaukee ratchet. The Milwaukee has much tighter tolerances. Okay, I'm just going to try a couple of bolts here. Now, if this board looks familiar to you, that's because we used this in a tool review video uh, several months ago when we tested this thing out. If you remember this, the Gator Grip socket. And this board here, we duplicated their commercial, their infomercial that they had on TV back in 1998 by trying to put as many of the same items in a row that they had that we tested it on. But anyway, I'll put a link to that down in the description for you. That's a really cool video for you to see. Okay, so here we are trying it here on this lag screw here. Just 
take it all the way down. It looks like it did pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to see if our Milwaukee 3 8 inch electric ratchet here is capable of loosening this after we just screwed it all the way down tightly into that wood. I want to make sure he's nice and level, perpendicular to the bolt there. Like a glove. Okay, now we're going to start the same bolt here and in a different hole, a fresh hole, fresh meat, with the Ryobi 3 8 inch electric ratchet here. Let's try it out. Let's get it onto the head there and let's go. So there you go, man. I mean, both of them did it pretty smoothly. The Roby felt good to hold in the hand. It's just very well balanced here with this battery on it. Okay, so we're going to try here with the Milwaukee 3 8 inch electric ratchet here. And I'm just going to steady it right here and see how it does. Here we go. Nope, he can't do it. Okay, so now in comes our good friend Ryobi here, and he's saying, hey, say hello to my little friend, huh? Do you want a piece of me? So let's put him on there and see what he can do, if anything. So he had no problem at all knocking that out. I want to back that back out again and try it with the Milwaukee again and see what he can do. Now, it may be that we loosen the wood a little bit, so maybe we'll try another pilot hole and run a whole new hole again with the Milwaukee. I want to see how much torque we think it'll take to loosen it, right? So right now, you can see the green LED just came on. Sure enough, I see four. So let's see if the Milwaukee ratchet can loosen that. Okay, so the Ryobi ratchet is going to stand by guard here, looking jealously on as the Milwaukee 3 8 inch ratchet here tries to loosen this. So let's take a look. Yeah, so you can see when it first started, there was a little bit of a struggle because you could hear the Milwaukee's buzzer in there going bzz, bzz, bzz. But it caught it and was able to unscrew it. Now, let's see if we can't reverse it again and drive it all the way back down. Okay, so it seemed to have made it okay that time. But remember, we've probably loosened the wood a little bit, so I do want to try again in a moment uh, with a fresh screw hole. Up first now here will be the Milwaukee cordless ratchet. Let's give it a shot. We can see about how far he made it down. So how many threads do we have poking above? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I guess that's the end of it, so we won't count that. So I see seven threads. Let's see if we can't make it go down any further. No, nope, it just seems to it keep stopping there. It can't go any further. Okay, so let's try to loosen it now. So it had no problem uh, loosening it there. I want to try sending it back down again. Maybe the hole's a little bigger now. Let's see if it does any better this time. Nope. That's as far as it got. And I'm checking the battery. We, we have battery left. Okay, so let's try it here now with the Ryobi. Let's see how we do. Ooh, the motor got really hot. You saw a little smoke come out there. See? I could smell it too. You can see the little smoke coming out there. But look, 
the Ryobi was able to force that screw down there a lot further than the Milwaukee ratchet could do. So you can see here that the Ryobi ratchet was able to get it all the way down to the end of the threads there. So it seemed to have a little more oomph. Maybe it's a newer technology. Remember, I've had this one here since 2017. So I've had this for three years, this Milwaukee ratchet here. And this Ryobi one is brand new and it probably has an improved motor in it. Okay, so let's try the Milwaukee ratchet right over here again. Okay. Mm, he's having a little bit of problem there. Let me see if I can ratchet him a little bit and make him go. See, it's so tight on the ratchet, so he's met, he's met his match there with this one. Okay, so I've made one change here, was I set internally here the torque max to be 35 foot-pounds. Here I have the torque adapter all set up here, and I just want to show you how this thing works in normal operation here, is we'll apply pressure on it here with the, the wrench, with our ratchet, and you can see it starts to turn green here, meaning it's in normal operation there. And then the closer we get to 35 foot-pounds, you'll start to see it turn yellow, and then it'll start warning us. See, there's the beeping. There it is. It means it hit the 35. And here it is close up. Okay, folks, now Milwaukee is claiming that this M12 3.8 inch electric ratchet here has a superior fastening speed of 250 RPMs. Well, you know me, I'm an engineer and I'm always going to hold people accountable, right? So today we're going to use our digital tachometer here. We're going to put it up at full speed and we're going to measure the RPMs here and see if they're lying. Here with Ryobi's P344 18 volt 3 8 inch electric ratchet, they're claiming an RPM speed of 230. So we're going to also use the digital tachometer on this one as well to measure those RPMs and make sure that they're not lying to you. Okay, now in order to get an accurate measurement here on the RPMs, this will shoot a laser here, like you can see right here. It will shoot a laser right onto these here to measure the RPMs. But we have to use this strip of photographic film here. This is like a foil. And we have to put a little piece on here and it shoots the laser off of it and measures it that way. So we have to cut the piece now and we'll stick it on each one of these before we measure them. So then we affix the photographic film right there and that's what the laser will reflect off of. Now we will install a piece of this photographic film here on the Milwaukee M12, the 3 8 inch electric ratchet there. And there's our film installed and ready for measurement. Okay, so to test the Ryobi here, you see how if you turn this on, the LED is going to shine too much light up here on our reflective film. So we need to block this off with tape so that that light can't interfere with our measurement. There it is, 273. Look at this, I found another good useful purpose here from my Milwaukee M18 rocket tower light here because this will sit nicely right on top here. Actually, it looks pretty nice here with all the matching red Milwaukee here. So we're going to measure the revolutions per minute here on the Milwaukee 3 8 inch electric ratchet here for the digital tachometer to do its job and measure the RPMs. We have to tape off that LED light. I just want to take a minute here to go over an, an important safety warning here for you folks here. Now, both the manufacturers here will tell you not to use these electric ratchets here to torque down your lug nuts or to loosen them either, to break that torque. The reason is, is because these only go up to 35 foot pounds and as you know, lug nuts are normally required to be tightened down with 100 foot pounds of torque. So if you use this right here and and tighten that lug nut all the way to the point that it stops, you're going to go, oh, okay, we're done. This is great. We're tight. But that's not tight enough because you know it requires 100 foot-pounds. And that's usually, if you do it with a crowbar, it's going to be uh, you know, using quite a bit of force, much more force than this could ever exert. So if you saw that short video clip I showed you at the beginning of the video here of me screwing on the lug nuts here on the, on the wheel, 
that's okay to just use it to spin it until the point that it gets near tightening. So once you get it to this point here, you stop and then, so then you stop and you have to switch to a big honking torque wrench to complete the job, or you have to use a big crowbar or you have to use one of those big impact wrenches like the professionals use in the tire shops. The ones that go Okay, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, don't worry, it's just a suggestion. You know, I can do this. Look, people, I got this. <laughs> okay, now stop. Take a look at this idiot right here, okay? Do not be this idiot. This is a safety issue we're talking about here, folks. You do not want your lug nuts flying off your car at 60 miles an hour. That usually does not end up well for you. Well, I think both of these ratchets did quite well in the head-to-head -head competition here. And uh, you know what? For Bang for the Buck Award has definitely got to go to Ryobi here because both of these have virtually the same specs, yet the Milwaukee ratchet here is $149 and the Ryobi ratchet here is $79 here. So those of you on a budget are probably going to end up choosing the Ryobi ratchet. Okay, now you know the fact that these two have almost the exact same specs which is 35 foot-pounds of torque and between 230 and 250 or so RPMs, makes me wonder if maybe there's some internal components here that are the same, since both of these are made by TTI, that's the, the parent company, and that's the same company that also makes heart tools as well. Okay, so remember folks, both this M12 cordless 3 8 inch ratchet and from Milwaukee and the one here from Ryobi, these are both light duty. Now they'll tighten and loosen most of the bolts around your engine and stuff, but when it comes to something that really needs to be torqued to a specific value and it's you know somewhat up there, don't use these for that. Just use them to screw the bolt all the way down in, and then when you need to torque it, I want you to use your torque wrench. That's what these are made for. These are not torque wrenches, okay? This is not a torque wrench. Do not think of it as a torque wrench. All it really is is a, is a ratchet, a driver, okay? And then, if you don't have a torque wrench, and then maybe you have a, a torque adapter like this, this would be the other way to do it, would be to hook it up to a regular ratchet and just torque it using this digital torque adapter here to tell you how much torque you have. And by the way, you know, just an aside, you know, a lot of contractors like to badmouth Ryobi, so, but you know, a lot of these contractors that just like to trash the Ryobi name like that, they don't perform all of the tests that we're doing, so how would they even know if they don't even buy the tools? And while all of these same naysayers are trashing Ryobi, and you know, rightly so on a few products, not all of their products are, are all that great. Um, but if you look at what's been happening slowly over the past year, Ryobi has been quietly expanding their line and adding more and more tools and, and invading the once exclusive monopoly spaces of certain other tool companies. And by the way, their tools are getting better and better all the time too. And they're beginning to eat the lunch of some of these competitors because they're coming in with undercut price with some tools that actually perform folks. So just wanted to make you aware of that as well. Well, we had a lot of fun testing out both of these cordless ratchets here today. And I got to admit, man, Ryobi really rose to the occasion. They performed much better than I expected them to here. So anyway, if you're finding this video useful, do us a favor. Would you click on that thumbs up button down below? That tells us that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, all I can say is why not? You see the quality of the tool review videos we give you, the how-to videos, all of the remodeling videos, and the shop with me through the big box stores to help you find the best prices and the best tools out there. So click on that subscribe button down below. And when you do that, click the little gray bell icon next to it. That tells YouTube to go ahead and alert you every time we upload a video or go live. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate each and every one of you coming here. And we'll see you on the next one.